The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Uh, first, I want, on a personal note, I went through the course this summer, and I'm really happy to see so many healthcare, uh, or so many attending from the uh, healthcare sector, because I think in the future, it's going to be quite impossible to function in good structures without knowing something about this process improvement, lean and um, and Six Sigma, because otherwise, I don't think that you're going to be able to contribute in a good and productive manner. So really important and very nice to, to see you all here. All right, at the end of this, you'll be able to sketch a basic uh, value stream map, demonstrate um, some uh, basic analysis of those maps, and then recognize some steps for process improvement um, using your value stream map. You recognize this? Back to the, uh, the hot dog stand. And um, it may not look exactly like the ones um, you made. So it starts with taking the order, placing it in the in tray, get the order, cook the dogs, put them in the bun, and wrap them at the fruit. And then it's a question of do they need another hot dog or not. If they don't, they will go up to the order out. If they do, then you uh, go over. Check if the order is OK. Add the beverage, deliver it to the customer, and the customer leaves with their hot dogs. So value, as, uh, as we think about it in, uh, in Lean, is really value for the customer, right? It's not value for us. And in particular in healthcare, I uh, know so much about the engineering side, but in healthcare we really have a difficult time coming to terms with this. We struggle with it because it is oftentimes about how do things work best for us and not so much how do things work best for, for the patients, right? If it was the other way, we probably wouldn't have waiting rooms. We do have waiting rooms. We have waiting rooms all over. In fact, I work in the emergency department over at BI, and we have recently decided that we're going to make it a formal process to open our waiting room because we don't really want it, and it's going to be paged out as a formal process, as a formal step, that now we decide we open it. And we will not have it open if we have any open beds in the department, because it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, that would be value for the, um, for the customer. Identify the value stream, map out the end-to-end uh, -end linkages between the, the, uh, the processes, what goes on. Then we focus on making flow continuous from one end uh, to, uh, to the other. Pull, that we heard about earlier on. Let the customer pull the value rather than us producing a whole bunch of things that then get piled up and some of it gets wasted. Then um, we do it over and over again because we're never really going to reach perfection. So, but we're going to strive for the per perfection. So value stream mapping, it's uh, a tool to improve our processes, our whole production, by identifying steps that add value and also by identifying waste in our processes. We follow the value creation process we talked about from uh, one end to the other. And you need to go to Gemba to get out there and see what happens. Right? You can't sit in an office. You can sit in an office and you can think that you know what is actually happening. But you, in reality, you don't. I have some examples. I'll get to that a little later from our fine little hospital, if we have the time. But when you go and look at what actually takes place, you get surprised. Even in the environment that you work in yourself. Because we all think that we have the solutions to the problems that we encounter. And um, sometimes we do, and sometimes we actually don't. The uh, value stream map. It's the process maps that we've done. Some of you have already added your data. It can be time data. 
It can be quality data, inventory, resources, people, things, and whatever else. But don't, don't plot your maps with, uh, with things that are not really useful for you. So there are some steps to uh, creating these value stream maps. And the first is to define customer value and then the process. And we can discuss what customer value is. That is a debate you can see among yourselves here with the maps that you've created. You did not all agree on what, what adds value, what customers potentially would be willing to pay for. An example, we've just done um, a, a lean project with our registration people. Patients need to be registered, right? And um, is that a value-added process? We weren't quite agreeing on that, at least not initially, because you can say, well, I mean, patients, they don't care. But in fact, if you dig a little deeper, they probably do, because if you aren't registered, your visit is not linked to your record, and then it's not part of your history, and then it's, it's hard to tie everything together. So identify the value added and the waste steps. It's the next one. And then in order to change things for the better in the future, you need to understand what you're currently doing. So you do a map of the current state. Where are we now, right? And then you analyze that map and you find opportunities for improving things. You can look at bottlenecks, you can look at, um, at workload balancing, and you can have that as an open discussion of what can you make better. And now you just heard the, uh, the module on, uh, on people. And that's actually interesting if you use, if you involve everybody in this process, you can get a lot of good synergy in it. And by involving some of the skeptics, you can actually win them over sometimes. We've done that too, surprisingly enough, but uh, it is possible. Then you use that to create your future state map, and then you make an action plan for how you're gonna get there. And I think we'll get to that on day three in the, uh, in the A3 thinking. All right, we're back to this one. It follows the uh, value creation process and you have in your groups assessed the values and the wastes for each of the uh, processes. And now it's time to add some data. And I think that we'll just go with the map that you had handed out. All the data should be on it, times and seconds. And there's some quality measurements as well because the processes, they weren't perfect the whole way through, right? It wasn't 100% every time. We know our demand, our current demand at least, for the 50 customers, and we know how long we're open, so we know how long time we have to, uh, to fulfill the orders as they are. The tag time is our available times. It's four hours times 60 minutes. That should be 240 minutes. And the demand is 50 customers. So we have 4.8 or 288 seconds per customer. We also know that the cycle time from what we added up is actually 446 seconds. So we can all understand that they're pretty stressed, right? Because they're spending more time than they really have. And then there's the alternative calculation where you've uh, taken the set out and the clean out uh, time out um, some of you might have been thinking about that and done that when things are slow. And that gives you a little uh, short attack time, but there's still an imbalance between the attack time and the cycle time. So you're still, um, you're still in the negative. But you have two workers. So the question is, can you meet their demands? All right. If you take the second handout that you got uh, with the different processes on, Write down in your groups, you have 10 minutes, you'll get a warning after seven. Write down who is doing what, how much time they're spending, and then as well whether it's value added or non-value added. All right. You ask, I'll write. All right, we're gonna start up here because I, you look very ready. You're starting <laughs> to search for uh, solutions here. Sasha, how much is he working? Or she? One, five, nine, okay. Andy? 224. 
that. Okay, now weight and neither should be the same. So let's look at value added, non value added. 209, 174, 63 weight. All right, that seems reasonable. Let's see, uh, let's see if other folks agree. And again, just like last time, these things are kind of open to interpretation. Hopefully, actually, the, this mix is pretty prescribed, but this is up to your judgment, right? So we're expecting some different answers here. So this time we've got, basically because we constrained the problem down, these answers tend to agree. These are still, you know, yeah, people have different opinions about different things. And so we have a fair range there, but it does look like as an overall that um, this isn't a bad process. There's more value add than non-value add. So that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty good, actually. So these people are not wasting their time, but, but there is a substantial fraction of non-value added and, and weight time in the process. And what can we say about Sash and Andy? Balanced process? Uh-uh. No. That, that may be an opportunity to do better. And gets right at this issue of, well, our cycle time, our tack time, the time that each individual person is working, uh, don't match up right now. So back to Bo, and we'll, uh, we'll see where we can go from here. And you could also say with the, uh, with the differences on the value added and the non-value added time, what would you do to understand that better? Now we're sitting and doing it on paper here, right? I can't answer that question. <laughs> 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 I have another comment. So okay. You'd watch the process. Yeah. You could go and watch the process. Go and watch the process. And how about talking to the people there, right, the customers? Okay, your comment. I guess that brings me to that, um, like in CQI you give it, I can't actually remember now, it's been a while since I've implemented these, but you would give it a number, so that not every time, not every unit of Andy and Sasha would equal one. Um, and I think maybe we would value maybe some of her chit chat as personal relations that actually maybe people may be coming back to get the hot dogs, not because hot dogs are great to eat and they love these hot dogs, but they, she brings them back, so her time spent chatting, although taking up time, maybe given more like one or his less than one. So they may be doing balanced work if you look at it at a deeper level. At least that's an assumption until you've clarified with the customers right. whether exactly. this is really something that they value. The other, I mean, there's, there's, that's actually a, a, a comment with a, with that can be taken in a couple different directions, right? Yeah. Right now, this is, this is absolute time spent doing everything, so should so based on this, should Sasha chit-chat more or less? More. Does it do any good if she right. does less? <laughs> no, it actually solves nothing um, and makes the customers annoyed. So maybe, maybe more is the answer there. That's right. Um, yeah, and now this is just the time, right? We're also, you're also getting into sort of a value judgment of like who is doing more for the company, and that's, that's dangerous. So we won't go there very far. But, but certainly, it's not hurting anything for her to be doing that right right now because she's actually underutilized compared to Ann. Okay, so that's we're actually gonna do some numbers on that thought. Yeah, um, and we are gonna do, let's see here. Go. Click, there we go. If we look, Sasha's tasks, we all got the 159, 50 orders. So she is working 133 minutes out of the 240 minutes available, all right? That's at least, uh, and Andy was 224 uh, seconds per order. So working effectively 187 minutes out of the 240 minutes available. And uh, so their, their work time or their workload. Sasha is working 55% of the available time and Andy is 78 of the available time. And um, their capacity, if you, let me see here, the touch time per order, if you take the waiting time out, should be 224 seconds, which is defined by the one that's the slowest, which is Andy. Okay. So if you say that's 224, so they should be able to serve 
64 customers. That's if, that's if Andy Max is out. Yeah. Working 100% of the available time. That's not always a good idea. It's hard, at least. Um, so we're not going to talk about the uh, variations right now. We're going to do that <laughs> later. So we got a question? Yeah. So oh. just looking at this data, would our, if we were analyzing this company and saying, OK, what can we do to create a lean process, would our initial thought be, OK, what are the tasks that aren't needed, and how do we remove them from the process? Or would we say, OK, what are the tasks that Andy's currently doing that we could perhaps uh, reallocate to Sasha such that we have a more continuous flowing process? That is what you're going to be discussing in the next exercise that is coming up here in a minute or two. And then you can determine what you find more feasible. Right. Although, although you have a good point there, because yeah. the thing you said second is the one that's in the exercise. Yeah. The thing you said first gets at that issue of like, well, let's make Sasha more efficient or not. Because right. as we get a little deeper into the analysis, we find that, that that's not actually going to help us first order. So. Hold, hold the rest of that thought. But the best first step is to do what you've done now and analyze what's actually going on. We saw that our current production, the 50 uh, customers, is actually a little uh, less than they, can, uh, than they can produce the way they're doing uh, um, or the way they could be doing things if they were working 100%. So. Um, they need to improve their processes in order to uh, meet their growing demand, their popular stand, whether it's the talking, the chit-chatting, or the quality of the hot dogs. We don't know at this point. But um, we can see that they're underutilized, 55 to uh, 78%. And their work is not balanced either. And their cycle time per customer is too long, regardless of how you calculate it. Um, so we should be able to you should be able to shorten that by looking at it, OK? And that is your next job. Help them figure out what they can improve. How can they improve their utilization? How can they reduce their cycle times? So now you can change the order that they do things in. And um, find out what they need to do in order to serve 75 customers and 100 customers. So this is 10 minutes. OK, so this is a brainstorm. That, that, that's actually sort of a technical term, right? What's, what, have, have people uh, gone through brainstorming exercises before? Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. The medical people are saying, yeah. Engineers? Yeah. yeah, OK. So you're throwing ideas out there. No idea is rejected at this point. Let's just collect thoughts. Let's start back up. and. Uh, here, if you have some, uh, some suggestion for changes, improvement. Go ahead. Uh, so we we'll started to look at the process uh, of just taking the orders, because it seemed like that was where a lot of kind of the inefficiencies were disseminating from, or rather like a lot of the uh, holdups from our chart were coming from. So we thought that it might, it might actually be a better idea if there were um, pre-created tickets where um, a customer could write in their name, write in what they want, and then uh, give it to Sasha. And then while <laughs> while Sasha was uh, filling their drink order, they could pay her. And that would uh, get rid of kind of her adding the beverage later on, her rechecking the order, um, and some of those inefficiencies. OK. This or the other bird that it kills is that uh, while wait time actual wait time might not change initially. The uh, perceived wait time would change for the customer because if you hand them a drink ahead of time, then you know, sort of, uh, yeah. they have the perception that, hey, you know, things are going right. yeah, 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 they always bring your wine first. Uh, <laughs> get your drink first. Yeah. So they can sell you an extra glass. You, you yeah, that's that? right. It's already gone by the time dinner comes. Any other, uh, any other suggestions? We're going to go with back table, yeah? So we thought um, for steps number 10 and 11, with some um, different preparation work, such as keeping double the amount of stocked items and double the amount of trash bins, et cetera, condiments, they could cut yeah. that time in half and only right. do that work every two hours. Right. OK. And also, uh, since Sasha is not the one that actually taking the orders, 
things they were efficient and the people were just filling other tickets. She could actually help Andy out in the kitchen by being the one to do part of steps four and uh, five. Yeah. If, if Andy puts the dog in the bin and wraps it in foil, she can just um, add the fruit of choice yeah. and put it in a seven container. That way she doesn't have to recheck in step seven because she's the one actually doing it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So when we yeah. recalculate the numbers for that, originally right now it's 50 of value added time, 36 of not from 4 to 8 is 36 of non-value time and 33 of wait time. When we change their what they're doing in each part of that so that he's just doing the dogs and she's doing everything else and we take out that sitting on the counter wait time, it all becomes 80 of value added time. So we have no non-value added time anymore and no wait time. So we've eliminated all that, and we have 80 of value versus the 50 that's originally there. Okay. Does it change any of the times in between the two of them? So um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, um, Sasha I added more time. time. Sasha is going to work more? A little bit more. Sasha will be worked 20 more. seconds. Oh. Right. Yeah. She Just was originally, I think, yeah. from four to seven, like 21, and now she's 40. Okay. So, and those are seconds that is going from Andy. From Andy, from Andy to Sasha. Yeah. We kind of had a similar suggestion where Sasha would do some of the work of filling the container, but we kind of envisioned it as like a flow or a Kanban, and that she would fill the containers, and then Andy could just look down, see how many contain, see how many containers just waiting for him, and then he could just put the hot dogs in, wrap them up, and then give them back, or they they would already have the fruit, like she could put the, the bun kind of in the foil ready to put the hot dog. Good idea. Like that? Very nice. Others? Yes. I don't have to see. Um, they had the customers getting their own beverage and putting their own toppings on um, because that has their own time and it also reduces the errors. If you're only drinking a hot dog, you can't screw it up. And then like you, the, the customer like knows what they want and it would also give them more control over and we also have them getting their own fruit. Yeah. Um, if there was some sort of way to make sure they didn't get it. Very good. More suggestions? All right. So what, what you have done here is you have rearranged some of your processes, right? You have change the, the workload in between uh, the two um, in the business here as well so that they're working more even or have a more even workload. And you're involving the customers, saying customers can do some stuff themselves. They can pick up their fruit, they can pick up the drink, uh, don't need to have someone doing that for them. Right? Or, and some of you focused on reducing the or involving the customers to make the wait time go down as well. I like that. What else do we... So did anybody go to Fresco's today? At lunch place? A little deli caddy corner? I guess not, no. Yeah, they, they, have, a, they have a great system there, which is, which is apocryphal. I'm not sure if the story is true, but, uh, but I know one of the, one of the uh, Saturday Night Live people actually lived in Cambridge for a long time. Um, it's, a, it's, it's alleged to be the, the cheeseburger cheeseburger inspiration. You say what you want and they yell, right? There's no ticket, there's no, you know. <laughs> All right. So, and then they yell back to make sure they understood the order, right? So it's. Well, that's good. It's like BLT small fries, BLT small fries. Yeah. Takes one second to say, low error rate, high training. That guy's got to keep it in his head, right? <laughs> so, uh, but. Uh, yeah, so, but most of the other possibilities are, are definitely up here. Some good ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and this part, by the way, is, is also pretty realistic in the sense that this is art, right? You don't know the answers. The, none of these techniques tell you the answer. What they do is frame the problem and help you understand what, you're trying to, what, you're, what problems you're trying to solve. You're not trying to make Sasha stop chatting. You're trying to improve the overall performance of the uh, of the system
One question we have when looking at this is that not all of the time is allocated, and it's unclear exactly why the wait times are the way that they are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's the question of like, the flow of orders, and so maybe from 11 to 1, they are at capacity, and then there's just no demand from 10 to 11 to 1 to 2. Um, so there might not even be the opportunity to, to increase capacity without hiring another person or doing something different. And that's the kind of thing you would find out by actually going and observing the process rather than us sitting in a classroom here and, yep. and saying this is the way it is, I think. That's right. Um, on the other hand, there are things, there are things that always help, even, even if there is that issue of maybe some of the time they're slammed. You know, balancing always helps, oh, yeah. right? Eliminating non-value added steps always helps. So. Yeah. There are some things you can do confidently. There are other things that you may have to actually go and see. What does this make sense? Will this work? And possibly even experiment with. Try it. See if, see how it goes the next couple of days. You know. So. All right. So, a few things that we thought about. The in order where it's sitting. What is it? Thirty seconds here in step two, and the out order. Take those away. The inspection, we heard earlier, you, that inspection doesn't add much. I really like this. I don't think I've heard that one before. The thought of, of consolidating Sasha's work and the inspection into one step. Into one, yeah. Right? So then you get the quality, but there's no extra step. So it's a good solution to, to not a priori eliminate inspection, which might lead to quality issues. And balance the work you've already done as well. Now we're down here to uh, create a future state map to visualize how we want this to look in the future and then create the action plan for how you're going to achieve your change because talk alone won't do it. So make the map, create a plan, set some deadlines <laughs> and, uh, and assign some uh, responsibilities for who's going to do what. To, uh, to change things. So the uh, value stream map is useful to visualize what is going on, the interactions and the flows, and uh, gives you the linkages, linkages between your, um, your information and your product flows. Gives you a language that you can talk about with the ones who are in the group, and you can identify your constraints and capacities and wastes. Oh, you have a question? Oh, well, I just have a question about the process. Maybe I'm having difficulty visualizing it, but it seems like it's the hot, like we're following the hot dog in a, in a linear way, whereas it seems like some of this stuff happens simultaneously, so I'm not sure, like, some of the seconds overlap. It's not like Sasha's seconds happen only after Andy's seconds happen, so that's a little bit hard yep. for me to understand in this flow model. And that as I perceive it, that can sometimes be a problem to, to look at it like that in a process map. And there, I have a slide a little bit later where you can look at swim lanes as well, because it can depend on who is doing what, and that can happen at the same time as well. All right, so the, you're absolutely right. Things, yeah. they do happen simultaneously. The, the, the classic issue which, which, you're, which you're keying on, I think, is like, in a real hot dog stand, there'd be a bunch of hot dogs on the grill that would be cooking at the same time that all this other stuff is going on, right? Mm -hmm. So there are some processes that are maybe out of phase. And that, that's true. That's a, real, that's a real issue. The map doesn't catch that very well, no. right? That issue of, of, some, of some things happening kind of out of phase of other things. Um, but it's a, it's a tool. It's not a perfect tool. It no. doesn't solve all of your problems. All right, so tips for creating it. Involve the entire team. Everybody who's involved in these processes need to be involved. It can't only be a few people that maybe have management positions. You need to have the people doing the work come and be involved in this because they are the ones who understand the work the best and can come up with the best suggestions for how to change it, all right? And you need to actually go to Gemba, go and see, Use the post-it notes like you've done now on your map. Put that on. And then you can uh, use your symbols. You can use whatever you pretty much like. There are some that are more used than others. But, but that's however you, want it, uh, however you want to do it, as long as you make sure you have a common language. Here's a little bit about the swim lanes. 
because you can have different providers or different processes at the same time in an organization and, and you can try to map it out like this, right? So things that take place at the same time. Or you can have the castle wall with uh, production times and wait times, right? Add it up in the end, have your wait times and your, your production or your, your productive times. So there are many ways and uh, there are some resources where you can learn a whole lot more about this, okay? Can I just say one more thing? When you do a value stream map, make sure that you bring it to the people doing the work to get their validation. Say, did I leave anything out? Did I forget anything? Because oftentimes you miss something and they can say, oh, but you forgot that we do this. And I think that's really important because then it gets them to buy into what you're doing as well. And even more stronger, you should have those people participating in Absolutely. the creation of the value <coughs> stream map. That's actually what, what we do at BI, the ones doing the processes, and it's often from different provider groups. We involve them, we, we invite them, and we, we help them come up with this. And then post them on the, the floor to the board so they can see them and make comments. And... Good technique for all of these things that you do is take pictures of these things, and you can post them or you can email them out to people and say, this is. This is what we found. Please give us if you have any comments. There's also, this is also a really good link between administration and frontline workers. Because I know in, in most hospitals, the administrators take turns walking around to visit the floors. And a lot of them are not clinical. It might be the CFO or something. They come around and they go, how are you doing today? Do you need anything? How are you doing today? Do you need anything? But if you have a value stream map posted, they can go to that map and you can discuss what you're working on together. And it just brings it to a different level. We call it boardwalks. <coughs> Give them something to look at. And the same is true in an engineering environment. It's not just a healthcare. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. For healthcare, if if you dare, <laughs> go and find a patient who's arriving to your emergency department, to your area of work, wherever that may be. <coughs> Follow that patient. If you're a phlebotomist, Go find a patient registering for their blood draw. Follow them the whole way through, okay? Take a chill pill before you do it. <laughs> because, at least in my field, in the emergency department, I've tried. And I think IHI calls it the walk of shame. And, <laughs> and it really is, but it is important because otherwise you will not understand. Most of us, I mean, we have different ways into the healthcare system. Again, I'm, that is my perspective. So let's be honest, my wait time in my own emergency department is probably not gonna be the same as somebody else's. And another thing is, I don't have the same need to frequent my, an emergency department, right? And if the things I can just fix myself. But go find a patient, ask them politely if you can follow them for their journey, and then stick with it. Take notes. Bring your stopwatch. All right. There you go.